What's up people, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So for today, we're gonna to talk about a little bit of a controversial subject, and that is scratching at weddings. <laughs> Now this is a topic that DJs really have a different opinion on. Some DJs are all about it, some DJs think it should be illegal, there's some DJs in between, but in this video I'm going to talk about why I scratch at weddings, I'm going to give you a couple examples of different scratches I use, how I use them, and you decide for yourself. And before I even start, I'm in no way saying that you should scratch at weddings. It's not necessary, right? You know, if you if you don't scratch, it doesn't mean you're not a good DJ. Some of the best DJs I know don't really scratch at all. They just are super creative and they're really good at mixing or whatever, you know what I mean? They all have their strong points. So I'm not saying that if you don't scratch, you're a loser, you know? Like that's not what I'm saying, okay, at all. I just thought it would be super useful to explain the different scratches that I learned that I was able to incorporate at weddings to kind of freshen up my sets to to kind of set me apart from my competition because at the end of the day most wedding DJs don't scratch which brings me to why you might want to consider scratching if you're into it the first reason that I just talked about is most DJs don't scratch at weddings so if you can do it and do it well and do it tastefully which we're gonna talk about in a little bit it'll really set you apart from your competition it'll set your sets apart it'll set your mixing apart it'll set you apart from everybody else you're gonna be different chances are there's very few or no DJs in your market that scratch at weddings. And also, it's just a great ass time. If you have ADHD like me, like you always have to be doing something, you know, scratching kind of gives you something to do while you're mixing, kind of freshen little things up, you know, making things different or whatever. And to me, that's more fun than kind of just sitting and waiting or dancing around or singing along, waiting for the song to get to the point for me to mix. Now there is one huge caveat to all this, and that is that you have to really get good at a particular scratch before you can bring it out and do it live. Why? Because if you're not good at it, it really will sound like shit and you're gonna have people turning like, ugh, ugh, like what are you doing, you know what I mean? And live in a setting while you're mixing, you're more likely to mess up. Like you really, really have to practice, 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 practice before you can ever attempt to do it live or else you're gonna sound bad. And I'm not trying to be mean, but like scratching is just one of those things that you really suck at for the longest time until you get good at it, until you just, it clicks in your head and you just get it down. That's why scratching is really difficult to learn and most DJs won't put in the effort to learn it because it's literally listening to yourself suck over and over and over and over again until, oh shit, wait a second, this is it. I think I got it. And all of a sudden your muscle memory kicks in and it and it just clicks, it just clicks. Any scratch I've ever learned in my life, it just clicked to me one day. And then once it clicked, then I practice it another 10,000 times. And once I got it where I didn't have to think, I could just do it without looking, then I brought it out to the public. So just remember, you're not gonna learn how to scratch overnight. It takes time. It's like a workout. You have to just do the reps, do the reps, build all those muscles, all those tendons and whatnot, build that muscle memory, and eventually you will get it down. Now this in no way is a scratch tutorial. I'll show you the cuts. I'll show you kind of how they work. I'll show you examples of how I use them, but I will link my favorite scratch teacher in the world, DJ Angelo, below if you never heard of him. He has a whole YouTube series where he literally breaks down every single cut, how to practice it, how to learn it, how it works, all that stuff. And I think he can explain a lot better than I can. Like, I'm not gonna just redo what he did. So if you're really serious about learning how to scratch and stuff, go check out his videos and then just practice your ass off. When it comes to practicing, look at it like a workout. You work out one hour a day, right? Five days a week, you know, to kind of build your muscles, to get jacked, right? Well, do the same thing with scratching. Maybe an hour a day, five days a week, or every day. Just learn those scratches. Try it with different BPMs, go up and down, whatever. Any scratch we're gonna talk about today, that's what you have to do to learn it. Just repetition, repetition, until you get it down. And then again, once you get it down, put another 10,000 hours in and get it down where you don't gotta look. You can do it drunk, you can do it half asleep, you can do it just not, not even thinking about it, you can do it. Because at the end of the day, scratching is one of those things that if it's done correctly and if it has the right funk and just tastefully and you kind of add it in here and there, it's just, it's musical. It really does sound good and the average person will just, wow, that's kind of cool, wow. And they'll just, they'll groove to it. They'll be cool with it. They, they don't have to be DJ DJs to know that that was cool, you know? And that's the biggest misconception I see DJs say, no one cares about scratching. Your client's not gonna care if you scratch or not. And maybe they won't, like they're not gonna like, they're not looking for a scratching DJ to DJ their wedding per se, but when they hear it, they're gonna think it's cool. 
right? When they hear it, wow, that's different. They're gonna know something's different there. The same argument applies for beat mixing, for for anything, word playing, tone playing, like all those things are like, wow, like, you know, nobody's gonna know what that is, why do it? They don't know what it is per se, but the average person can still listen and hear you do something cool and be like, wow, I recognize that that's cool. I recognize that that DJ sounds different and I like how he sounds better than the other DJs I've heard. It's about setting yourself apart. You wanna charge more money for weddings? You wanna DJ for celebrities? You wanna be, you know, the best DJ of all time, right? Like we all wanna be? You have to set yourself apart. And scratching is a big way to do that, especially in our world. Now I do use turntables at all my events. You don't have to use turntables to scratch. You can scratch with any control in the face of the earth. As long as there's a crossfader and you got your platters here, you can definitely scratch with it. I will say it's a little more easier, a little more intuitive on turntables because you have full control rather than like you're counting on your controller, jog wheels to kind of like feel the touch and all that and that sort of wears out after a while. But you can easily scratch on those things. And honestly, if you learn how to scratch on a controller and you're solid on scratching on a controller, you put all that time on a controller, and you hop on turntables, you're gonna be Tiesto. Tiesto, Tiesto can't scratch. What the fuck am I? Uh, 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 Cube, Cubert. You're gonna be Cubert. You're gonna be Cubert. Maybe not Cubert, because Cubert's like an alien. You know what I mean? You're gonna be a lot better if you try it on turntables, if you learn on a controller. That's all I'm trying to say. And just so you know, for scratching and mixing and everything in general, I set my crossfader all the way to the right to cut mode or whatever it's called. I'm sure there's a technical term and I don't even know it, but uh, it essentially makes no sound when you put the crossfader all the way over. And then as soon as you just let it out just a little bit, it's full sound, so there's no fade. The other way or in between fades between the two tracks, right? So you can set it all the way to the left and it'll be like a fade. So when you go from here, it'll fade all the way from channel two to channel one, channel one to channel two and so on, right? It'll fade. But to scratch and to do the different scratches we're about to talk about, you want it to hard cut. That way, like, bam, you can just let the song out as soon as you bring it out. But anyway, let's get into these cuts, shall we? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name each of the four scratches. I'm gonna give you an example of what the scratch is, right, just with a sample so you can see it raw in its essence. Then I'm gonna give you an example of how to use it in a live setting with a live mix. And keep in mind, I specifically picked out each live example out of my wedding crates to kind of give you perspective on how you can incorporate this in your wedding mixes. Now the first scratch, you already know how to do. You just gotta get funky with it if you haven't already. That is called the baby scratch. This is my recital. I think it's very Music make you lose control. 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 The next scratch is the baby, but then you get to incorporate the crossfader. And that is probably the most eye-opening, useful scratch I've ever learned in my life, the chirp. The next scratch is a stab, and we're not gonna kill anybody, okay, but this is a super useful scratch to use in combination with different scratches or to just straight cut a song in. I'm gonna show you two different examples of it, an open stab and a closed stab. And last but not least, made famous by the great DJ Jazzy Jeff, the Transformer Scratch. Hold up. 
Now that you've seen the scratches, I can't stress enough. Please practice. Get these down and get funky with it. Do it to the beat. Just, just, just get funky. Use it as like almost an instrument. You know, you're making sounds, you're making tones. Do it in time with the beat. There's so many DJs that just like straight, just, uh, just, just, just no rhyme or reason. They're just moving a fader really fast. Just, uh, just, just blasting a fader. There's no reason for that. There's no funk. There's no musicality to that. Just learn it and get it down in a way where you can do it like second nature and. And then you could just bop, 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 just, just, just do, just you can get, you put some funk into it. Just put some funk into it. Don't be one of those DJs that just, no, I can scratch and just does dumb shit. You know, get it down, do it right, and put in the time. And I promise you, within weeks, within weeks, if you really dedicate an hour a day to practicing, you're gonna get these things down. It's gonna click for you, and you're gonna get hooked at that point. Because for me, when I first started getting these cuts down, I got so excited. I just, I had to learn more, you know? And then I just dived into more and practiced more stuff and tried this and tried that and then listened to other DJs and wow, I kind of understand how they did that now and then try to mimic it and then try to do my own spin on it. Like it, it'll just, it'll create like a whole new realm of DJing for you. It really, really will. I, I really think you'll enjoy it. And by the way, if you like this video, Give it a like, it'll help my algorithms. If you didn't like this video, give it a dislike. It'll help my algorithms too. Either way, it's a win-win. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. And I'll see you guys next video.